Good morning. My name is Nella Kelpik, and I am the Outreach Director for Marcy's Law for Wisconsin. Thank you all for joining us on this special day. As you know, today marks the one year anniversary of the election day when an overwhelming 75% of Wisconsin voters voted to ratify the Crime Victims Rights Constitutional Amendment known as Marcy's Law. In what is a rarity for Wisconsin politics these days, all 72 of Wisconsin counties voted yes. The successful vote was a culmination of nearly four years of hard work by the Marcy's Law for Wisconsin team and its supporters in the legislature, the victim advocate community and law enforcement. And as survivor myself, it has been so hardening this past year to see Marcy's Law at work, helping crime victims navigate a criminal justice system they were forced into through no fault of their own. After one year, we can clearly say Marcy's Law is working. We're joined this morning by survivors and victim advocates who are going to speak to the impact of Marcy's Law one year after the vote. Crime Victim Services with Department of Justice for being here at the press conference today and for joining us in support of recognizing the one year anniversary. Now, I want to first introduce the inspirational Terry Jindusa Nikolai. Terry, I believe you're on mute, Terry. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's wonderful, wonderful to be here on this beautiful day, um, this day of celebration one year anniversary of overwhelming support by people all over the stage. It's, it's, it's something to really be celebrated. As a survivor myself, uh, most people have heard my story. Uh, I was divorced and had gone to my ex's home to pick up my children and was, you know, kidnapped and beaten with a baseball bat and duct taped and thrown in a garbage can and thrown in a storage locker uh, to die. It took me months and months to recover. I lost my toes due to frostbite, lost the baby I was carrying. It was a horrible experience. And it was even harder, uh, you know, going through the court system, navigating through, not knowing what was going to happen, not feeling like you had much of a voice. So Marcy's Law being passed was a huge victory for me personally. And it's wonderful to be able to see people now be able to use that to help them through. I know a case in particular in Kenosha where a woman was uh, raped, assaulted, and almost murdered. And she was able to go and, and tell the judge that this person should not be let out, uh, you know, because of the crimes and because of the fear that she had um, because of the flight risk and to have that actual voice in the courtroom is huge it's a monumental thing for victims all over the state and i applaud everyone who voted for it and i'm so happy to be here today and one of the people that were very instrumental in getting this um, to the voters is my favorite senator senator wangard so i'm going to turn that over to you now senator wangard Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this press conference of monumental importance. I think when we as individuals, especially in the legislature, are able to do something that has such a huge impact on every person that uh, can come in contact with a negative um, event occurring as a victim, uh, this, is, this is just really huge. And I think for us as a state to declare that victims should have rights that are, are definite uh, and that um, can be uh, used in a way that it's going to minimize the negative things that victims uh, encounter. Um, so from my perspective, having been in law enforcement for uh, more than 30 years, uh, 30 years on the police department, uh, about five years before that, starting in the exploring program and seeing things occur with uh, victims uh, that officers responded to. And then another 
another uh, 20 years after that, being on the county board and a police and fire commissioner and being directly involved with law enforcement and again, seeing victims. Um, this is so important, I think, for us to realize that uh, talking to my constituents and to people that were victims and to law enforcement people, judges uh, that have stepped up and supported Marcy's Law, uh, because they also realize the importance of making sure that victims have the ability to be able to be present during uh, some of those court proceedings. And in the process, they did not ask to be involved in the process at its beginning when they became a victim, but they should be included all the way through to the end of the process till we deal with whoever the offender is for resolution for that. So uh, I am proud to have been a supporter of Marcy's Law. I continue to support it. Uh, as I've talked to people around my district and the state, uh, they didn't have any problem understanding what was uh, in the referendum and they fully support uh, victims being given a voice. And uh, I wanna thank Terry for being so upfront and talking about her, um, her situation that occurred, uh, her having to actually re-experience this just about every day when she's talking to people about about victims' rights. So thank you for that, and Naila, thank you. Um, I would like to introduce uh, my colleague uh, in the assembly, uh, Representative Novak, uh, who helped work on this in the assembly and educate our colleagues on that side of the building. Uh, Todd, are you there? I am here, thanks, Van. Um, you know, I'm really excited to, to be here from where we started. Uh, this was a concept um, that came to, and I was proud to lead this in the Senate, or in the Senate, in the Assembly, along with uh, Van in the Senate. And this was not an easy task. Um, you know, it's it's really remarkable today. We're celebrating the one year one year anniversary of um, this vote. Um, you know, we had uh, rooms full of people trying to pull this together and to get it past the both houses in two successive sessions to get on the ballot is not easy. And um, I agree, um, there's, there were so many victims that had to come and testify over and over and relive what they had went through. Um, and for, for all of you that did that, um, it, and it really was a huge difference and pushed this over the top and, and made it easier for Van and I, and I know that was not easier for you for you guys. And we really wouldn't be here today. This was a bipartisan effort. This was not a Republican or Democrat um, Democrat issue. Um, and we had robust stakeholder feedback from all the groups. I mean, I believe there were over 90 some groups that supported this um, in the end. And, and um, we had great persistence to make sure this kept advancing. And, you, and I think overall, it says something about the state of Wisconsin that's passing by such a huge margin. Um, Wisconsin has a rich history of protecting victims' rights. You know, it's reflected in, in numerous areas of our state statutes and the Constitution. And Marcy's Law just helped bolster that protection um, and um, by conferring a special or specific rights to victims in, in the Constitution. And it all goes back to me why I decided to take this on in the Senate. Victims deserve to be treated with dignity respect, courtesy, sensitivity, and fairness. And that's one thing that Marcy's Law did. It's working. I've heard from district attorneys uh, in my district um, who so very much supportive of this bill. They've already um, um, have, you know, it's been implemented in their offices. So um, it's great that, to be here, like I said again today, and thank you everybody um, who helped get this done. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Natalie Aiden, who's a survivor and community activist and uh, helped with this project. Good morning, everyone. My name is Natalie Hayden. It was 2017 and I couldn't imagine uh, paying child support to my abuser while living in a domestic violence shelter. Um, I can recall a moment where there was hope that was lost. And when we think of Marcy's Law and the impact that it has had um, over this within the year, um, it's where we feel empowered as victims, where we feel that there is an outlet, there is a way, there is someone that can advocate for us. This is why I have stepped in the role that I have um, 
today as the city of Milwaukee executive commissioner for domestic violence and sexual assault, we have taken the initiative to implement several aspects of Marcy's law with organizations that serve victims. This is no easy task. However, the process for dialogue of what it looks like per specific organization has begun. Marcy's Law serves as an important role in the justice system and the lives of victims and the accusers to ensure that all parties are treated with dignity, respect, and due process throughout the criminal and justice process. However, the importance of the victim's uh, crime rights have shadowed the re-victimization, the re-traumatization while in the justice process. Uh, Marcy's Law has served as a vehicle to voice and expand on the needs of crime victims. This is what we see when crime victims feel empowered, seen, and heard. So with that, I take the honor and privilege. I do not take it lightly that I have been asked to have a seat at the table um, with my experience, my passion, and my devotion to um, fellow victims, survivors, and thrivers that there is hope and light at the end of the tunnel. I thank you all for your work, and we have lots of work to do, and uh, we will continue to have this dialogue um, with organizations in the city of Milwaukee to continue to provide the needs of victims of uh, victims of crimes. I'm going to turn it over to Bronson Stein. Thank you. Hi, yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Um, good morning. My name is Bronson Stein, and I'm the uh, legal advocate at Bolton Refuge House. Uh, you know, there's a really important conversation that we're having, and I'm glad to be celebrating in this uh, milestone with Marcy's Law. Uh, I don't think it could be understated what the reaffirmation to expand the rights of victims of crime means to advocates like myself. As a legal advocate, I provide services to victims going through the criminal justice process. Uh, I've witnessed firsthand how a victim being deprived of their rights and powers within the process can be a traumatic experience in and of itself. Uh, when a victim is denied a voice, it is hard to stomach. We have Bone Refuge House work, and I know many advocates in this community share our philosophy under the assumption that survivors are the experts on their lives. We as advocates have the education and the theories and all the diagrams, but without each victim's voice driving the plans and change, the end result of our services just wouldn't stick. Ultimately, it's a matter of power and control. When providing direct services, we seek to empower survivors to advocate for themselves and build back up their power. It seems like common sense when said out loud, this assumption that victims are the experts on their lives. But when working with a system based on precedent and standardization, it can be challenging to fully equate for the individual experience of every victim. That's why something as basic as a victim's right to confer with the prosecution deserves a place within the state's constitution. It can't be more excited about the fact that Marx's law has done this. This right is invaluable and helping not only the criminal justice system deliver meaningful safety and dignity for victims of crime, but it creates an environment where the personal and specific wishes of the victim can be addressed. In the same way in which a defendant's personal history is used to ensure a more holistic approach to justice is taken, a victim of crime should be afforded similar opportunities to be heard throughout the process. Again, we are all coming into this without having lived their experience, both the victim and the defendant, so by offering opportunities to hear from the experts, we can hopefully achieve a greater form of justice and equity. The rights that Wisconsin established in the 80s and refined in the decades since were an initial response to the problems we all recognize regarding the way victims were treated in the system. But like most solutions, we didn't get it 100% right the first time. It needed to change. Enshrining the rights in Marx's law within the state's constitution is the kind of foundation on which we can hopefully build the equity between victims the rights of victims and the rights of the accused. We as Wisconsinites have recognized the importance of this movement for decades and have successfully enhanced the rights of victims while maintaining the integrity of the criminal justice system. Marcus Law is another extension and reaffirmation of that commitment. And I have a lot of faith in our state to continue to try and help survivors and victims, whether a system that is not designed with them in mind, but will be envisioned to include them in a respectful and empowering way. And with that, I pass it over to David Williams out of Polk County victim witness. Thank you, Bronson, and uh, thank you everyone for the invitation here. Uh, just a little bit about who we are. Um, I am David Williams and I'm the president of the Wisconsin Victim Witness uh, Professionals Association. 
We're an organization of victim witness coordinators and specialists actually throughout the whole state, all 72 counties. We have about 145 members. Um, the mission of our organization is to advance the professional development of our members um, to affect positive change on behalf of crime victims um, and to ensure that victims and witnesses of crime are treated obviously with dignity, fairness, and respect as guaranteed now um, in our Wisconsin Constitution. Um, in my role as a victim witness coordinator and also the president of our association, I have been told uh, numerous times or repeatedly how under Marcy's law that victims feel they have a voice that has been now heard in the courts. Um, Marcy's law ensures that victims will continue to have their voice throughout the court process. And it's imperative that all the victims continue to have that opportunity to be heard. Um, I can say Marcy's law continues to foster a trauma-informed environment, not only within our court systems, but it also um, with everyone involved to ensure that victims' rights are met. And again, I would like to thank everyone for the invite and thank you, Amelia, and I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, David. Um, well, with that, we will be happy to take any questions. And if you would like for somebody specifically uh, to answer the question, just let us know in the chat or please raise your hand. Otherwise, we will open it up to the whole group. And while we wait uh, an opportunity and uh, thank again, Michelle Visti, Director at Office of Crime Victim Services with Department of Justice for being here at the press conference today and for joining us in support of recognizing the one year anniversary. Thank you. Um, any, any questions? Okay, uh, so we have a question for the whole group. Uh, and I would like to just say, uh, I guess, thank you all, all so much for, for being here today. I know I heard my dog bark in the background and now when the questions came, he became silent. So I don't know, that means he's very happy with everything just like uh, everyone else. And thank you so much much and uh, with that I would uh, like to conclude the, the conference for today. Thank you everyone for attending. Last second. We have a we have a question from uh, News 8 um, and I tried to unmute oh, we do. but it, it, it doesn't seem to be uh, working but it, the question is before Marcy's Law did victims not get the chance to be heard ever? Can I tackle that? Uh, I think when you add the last word on ever, uh, I think that kind of just obviously, I, I believe that victims were heard at times, but I think the inconsistency across, you know, the different jurisdictions and how victims are systemically treated from the standpoint of having some uniformity and requirements uh, allowing victims to be able to be part of the process in the court process and and understanding that the, the the first contact they have with law enforcement of which i was there many times um is not the only contact they're going to have until the end of the process so i think including them in the entire um in the entire uh continuum of this entire process that started with whatever uh, the the uh, event was that that brought this to uh, law enforcement attention, I think the victims need to be in that that process right from the beginning, or at least have the opportunity to be there. And I don't think that was always afforded, just because I think it's a lot more expedient to not have to listen to people sometimes when they are victims. And that's why it's so important. And here in Wisconsin, we are so blessed to have victim witness uh, groups. Uh, or victim witness uh, offices uh, throughout our 72 counties that, that really help 
the victims understand the process and help them deal with um, just whatever that issue was. Uh, I, I, I think about the young women who have been raped and that is something that continues throughout your entire life. And, and it's, not always, uh, it, it's not always easy to address that issue. It has impacts that carry on throughout somebody's entire life. I think about Terry, who has been so, um, so productive in bringing her case forward uh, and, and helping people understand the importance that, that victims need to be heard. Uh, I think this is this is something that I think strengthens all of our, our victims and gives them the opportunity to be there. So I think a lot of times uh, there might have been situations where they weren't heard and they weren't considered because you didn't have to do it. And so that's why we're leaders. We're the tip of the spear here in Wisconsin, and we continue to do that and proud to be involved in that process. Thank you for the question, by the way. Thank you, Senator Von Gard. Um, is there anyone else who would like to respond to this question? I'll just say quickly to add on what Van said. Um, I think one of the pieces of this that really struck me, um, I'm in a rural area and it was the notification piece that wasn't being done where um, I, so many victims would just run into their accuser in the store and not even know they were out. And um, that, you know, like I said, in, a, in an area where everybody knows everybody is with the way my district is, I, I think that that was very uh, heart wrenching to hear the stories about, you know, running to somebody that's been accused of doing horrible things to you that you didn't know was out. And I, um, that's happening now, now that the victims are being notified. Um, you know, where um, that their accusers out of jail or out of what, whatever, out on bail. And um, I think that's an important piece of this that's happening now. Thank you, Senator. Um, okay, here is another question uh, that is for the whole group. Uh, how often are courts compliant with Marcy's law? Do you have data at the county level since the law was enacted? Again, open to the whole group. Anyone who would like to address this? I could answer just part of it. Um, I don't have any data at the county level, um, but I can just say this, that our judges are compliant with Marcy's law throughout the whole process. Um, I can't think of how they wouldn't be compliant, I guess, anymore, but. Um, um, yeah, it's, I think Marcy's law is going well and with all the courts and um, I think the judges actually, um, I, I guess I'm not gonna speak for the judges, but I think they actually um, uh, like the law and like the process, seeing the victims able to speak throughout it. Thanks, David. Uh, anyone else who would like to respond? Okay, well, I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions, and that seems to be the case. Uh, so, oh, here is one more. Okay, so again, the whole group. Uh, for someone who has been affected by Marcy's law, what does it mean to be heard, to be informed, and to be seen by the justice system? Who would like to take this question? open the whole group. I can chime in on this one. Uh, to be heard, informed, and seen by the justice system is to have a voice. Uh, and as a legal advocate, right, uh, my whole job is to help victims navigate that process uh, and make sure that they know when they can um, interject, when they can dispute, who they have to talk to. Um, the state ultimately doesn't represent the victim, right? We often sometimes forget that, um, that it's not necessarily the state's job to represent a specific victim, protection of that victim, sure, um, but to represent their interests. Um, the victims themselves sometimes have different thoughts on what they perceive as um, justice. Um, you know, sometimes um, you know, even even interventions by the state that state sees as 
protective in nature, uh, a victim might see as too restrictive um, on their own person. So they might even want to um, amend, you know, just anything that happens. And um, when we're talking about being heard, informed, and seen, uh, it gives the victim complete control over their own um, situation within this process. You know, I believe the senator said um, uh, in his address that, uh, you know, victims didn't ask to be a part of this, right? They didn't uh, assume any risk, right? When it comes to um, being in the criminal justice system, they were thrown into it, um, uh, you know, without their consent. And that's really what uh, this right affords them is the ability to kind of take back that power and get to where they want to go and where they need to go and where they know uh, they should be um, without interference um, from anyone, really, the state, you know, the courts, um, anyone, which I think is really profound. So, um, yeah, for, for at least a legal advocate standpoint, that's what that would mean to us. And if I could just add to that, Bronson hit the nail on the head. It's about being included in the process. It's about uh, when you when you say have a voice, it's about being an active participant in what is happening. And, and the thing about Marcy's law and the thing about here in Wisconsin anyway, I think giving everybody equal access to something and everybody an equal voice, no matter whether you're a senior citizen or you're a child or you're white or black or male or female or Hispanic or Asian, all that stuff is moot. Because if you're a victim, you're just a victim. And when you have a good, clean, clear process to work within, that just makes it so much easier to apply the law. And it makes it so much easier for everybody to have a fair and accurate and, uh, and have a, a fair process that gets you to the end result. So you have a fair consequence for whatever occurred. And I think that that's where the important part is, is that this allows that to happen and it clarifies the process. You know, we have put things into our state law after we put it into our constitutional law back in, I think it was 93 and continued on to add things in the state law by taking advancing uh, some of the things we had in our state law to the constitutional level and just codifying that, that adds so much clarity to the process that it allows everybody to see what that process is and to be a participant. And I think that's the takeaway from this, at least for me, just the, the fact that everybody is honored with value. And I think that's the importance of what this legislation does. And all the people that are on this call that have been supportive of it from every different walk of life um, see that value. And, and this is, I think, the important thing that victims have value as much as offenders do too. I mean, so we need to have balance that. And I think that's what this does. Hi, um, what I see from Marcy's Law, what this has done is really spotlight. It, it, it brings something visible that was invisible. And at times throughout the process, there are many um, aspects of the process that is invisible. And it has brought to the forefront um, many processes that can really advocate and be of value to a victim feeling hopeful and safe and also, um, as mentioned, valued. So it has added value to our justice system. It has added value to the due process. It adds value to a victim survivor or thriver to um, be motivated to continue. The process is extremely daunting and tasked, it's weighted. And so with this, uh, with Marcy's law in place, it it inspires us to continue and to move forward throughout the process and to be visible. So I'm very grateful and thankful for um, not just, you know, anyone that lands in this daunting process, but that there is now um, the shadow has been lifted and we can just see more things are more visible. So thank you for that. Well, Natalie, so if I can thank mention you. Just and as a can I mention just, just, just one more, just one more, more thing here? Um, I wasn't going to say anything about this, but I, I think it's important to, to, to bring a current event that occurred in, in Caledonia here in my, my district where we had two 980 uh, sexual predators that were being um, 
placed in Caledonia next to a campground. And I received a phone call from a victim of one of these individuals who was not notified that these guys were even going to be, be put out. And this victim was five years old when he was victimized, a male. And when he was victimized, and he is now 30, and, or in his 30s, and he was just, he couldn't believe it that nobody contacted him that this release was going to happen. So they didn't they didn't follow what Marcy's law um what should have happened with it, you know, this recently happening, but they got a hold of him back when they needed him to testify in court at his potential parole hearing. And he went and testified as one of the victims. The takeaway that he had was the importance of being involved in the notification process. And he's 30 something now, and he still has uh, things affecting him you know, psychologically and emotionally and everything with this. And, and this is what this is another one of those reasons why it is so important that that victims are considered to have value and that these important uh, decisions that are going to be made by government have a process to give the victim the ability to be able to uh, deal with those adjustments rather than all of a sudden you just find out that they could be living in the same neighborhood you live in and not know it until all of a sudden you meet them on the street or the grocery store or something like that. And I think that's what this is about that again, that victim has value. And that we make sure that that we uh, uh, realize that and recognize that. And they got a hold of him uh, many years later and knew his address when uh, J.B. Van Hollen contacted him to testify, but nobody followed up and he hasn't moved from where he was at. So that hasn't changed. He still lives in Wisconsin. So just saying, this is so important. Thank you for listening. Well, thank you, Senator, again, for to you and everyone who joined us here today for your comments. I again, uh, and I know I speak on behalf of Marcy's Law team when I when I say that we're we're touched by your 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 thoughts, your words, and uh, your passion and commitment uh, uh, that brought you here with us today. Uh, so, with that, I thank you all again, and I would like to conclude. Uh, today's conference. And of course, thank you for everyone who asked, uh, who asked questions today. Thank you again. Goodbye. Have a wonderful day.